Hi, Prenda Guides, it's Cassie, and I am here to talk about a huge passion of mine, which is mathematics. I was a math teacher for six years, that's what my master's is in, is math education, and along the way I picked up some tips and suggestions on how to help students who just are struggling and are feeling really defeated in math. So here are some of the tips that I would suggest for you to help your students. The first is to talk to them about the idea of productive struggle. Creating an activity to do this, and there is a woman, Jo, who speaks beautifully about math and productive struggle and what it does in your brain. So I would start there just so they can have a foundation of why math is valuable to them and their learning. The second thing I would suggest is asking students who are struggling with math to take a, a good look at if they have any gaps or holes. And I know that that is hard for some students because they don't want to move down a level because uh, there's stigma attached to that. So I would encourage you to have conversations with them about how the study of math works, that if you have a gap all the way back in second grade and you're in sixth grade, you may get to a spot where you just feel stuck and you can't move forward and you're not moving up percentages if you're in con and feeling really defeated and that's because there's a hole back in second grade that we need to go plug up and learn and understand so that we can move forward in sixth grade. So whatever way you can explain that to them, um, have continued conversations with them around gaps and how we have to fill gaps. And when we do that, what it will do is allow for sixth grade or whatever grade they're in to become more enjoyable because they will have the foundations that they're missing and then they'll be able to move forward. The third thing, and this sounds really simple, is asking students, if you have students who are perpetually struggling and they like to do all the math in their head, I would just strongly encourage them to write it down. You can give them some choices. You can have them write in a notebook, on a clean sheet of paper. They could use a whiteboard. They could use a crayon, a marker, whatever they want. But what I have found in my, uh, my life, my former life teaching mathematics is I would have students who'd raise their hands and I'd come over and I'd say, what's, what's going on? And they would try and explain it to me in their head. And I'd say, you know what, can you just write it down for me? Cause I, I can't really follow the thought process in your head. And they would write it down and I would say 90% of the time they solved their own problem because what they were doing is trying to hold too much in their head. So there is this concept called working memory. And your working memory is where you process information. And depending on your age, you can hold between four and 10 things in there. There's a lot of studies that differ, but I would say most elementary age students could hold you know, probably four things in their working memory. And so what that means is if you're working on a math problem and you start working the problem and you're going through and you fill up that working memory, it's really hard for students to keep solving the problem because their working memory is full, but they're trying to keep it all in their brain. If they just would allow it to come out on paper, it would free up some space in their working memory because they're not having to hold on to that and then be able to progress through the problem. So again, talking to them about working memory, talking to them about its size, it has nothing to do with you are smarter or less intelligent. It's just we all have brains that have a capacity for our working memory. The last thing I would suggest is just getting them to recognize that even if they're using Khan or Dreambox or CTC Math, there are hundreds of thousands of resources out there that can help them understand math and they are allowed to go access them. So if they want to go find a different person on YouTube to explain that to them, they can do that. If they want to Google that topic and look at resources that people have written, they can do that. If they want to bring in a handheld textbook, they can do that. So just help them to recognize there are a lot of resources out there and they can use those resources to help them better understand the concept. And then of course, the last thing I will add to that piece is utilizing other students in the class, going out and saying, hey, I'm really struggling with this. Can you help me with that? And that comes with 
allowing for vulnerability in your classroom and it might take a while to get there, but encouraging them to do that as well. So those are my suggestions.